Hello everyone, many of you who have encountered Amiga emulation in the past have probably had a pretty frustrating experience because it is a generally complicated scenario as far as getting the emulation up and running. But we're going to try to make things as easy as possible today, uh, especially on the Mini Classics. You can actually go to AmigaForever.com if you'd like to take the legal route, and you can uh, buy the Plus Edition for roughly 30 US dollars. You get a Windows installer with some games demos, and you can even extract BIOS from it for use on your Mini Classics with PUAE. But I'll uh, say, for instance, you do actually buy it. You could go to uh, the shortcut that you have after installing the installer and go to Properties, uh, Open File Location. We're going to go to uh, Amiga Files. Then we're going to go to Shared. And right here, the ROM folder are actually all the BIOS. And uh, these are a little bit perplexing and confusing initially, but I'm going to have a little bit of a readme to make this easier as well as show you right now. But I'm going to copy this to my working folder. Okay, I'm just going to copy to my working folder right now. And then we're going to actually do a little bit of multitasking here. Because these are the BIOS that I'm working with. And then we're going to have some BIOS that we're going to basically rename for use on the Mini Classics. So we're going to go to the same thing and do a little bit of a BIOS folder real quick. So BIOS. And then of course we're going to need the README here. So we'll do like uh, some of my earlier tutorials where I have multiple windows open. But we're going to go in here and open up this little readme. And by the way, I'm going to take this readme and put it into my next release. Uh, get it done right now. If you go into my course set release, you go to Extras, Amiga. You'll have the little BIOS readme right here. And you just open it up. And then you'll be able to see exactly what you need. Uh, we're going to do this right now. So, I have a little bit of a readme here, KM here, Amiga has progressed exponentially over the last few years for the Mini Classics, etc, etc. You can read this once I do the release. But, uh, it's going down, and you can have some of the BIOS that you typically would be using for the Mini Classics. These are pretty much the original names, what you need to rename them to, what they're for, and they're in the five, uh, checksums in case you want to verify whether they're the proper files or not. I'll show you how to do that. But say for instance you buy the Forever BIOS installation, I have all these together right here and I went to the test and have everything up and running. I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So basically uh, we need WHD load uh, in order to run the HDF files, which I have right here. I'm going to simply copy that to my BIOS folder. And then I'm going to go back into that uh, folder real quick, the ROM folder. And then we're going to go to the next one in the list. We're going to do this right in a row. Uh, we need the Amiga OS 130 ROM, and we have to rename it to Kick 34005A500 to run some of the original chipset games. So we're going to basically find that 030. Let me move this up here. It'll be the 130 right here. OS 130 right here. And we're going to rename that. Okay, we got that renamed. And then we're going to do the 204 right below it to the Kick. 37175A500. Okay, we need to find the 204 real quick, which should be easy to find right there. And these are so you can run like the A500, A600, A1200, etc. Okay, we got that done. Now we're going to do the A600, uh, which will be uh, the 310A600. And you can look at these exact file names right here. So 310A600 right here. You can see this is real easy to do, especially with the test that I've already done here. Now we need the uh, 1200 file. So let's do that real quick. We're doing this right down the line. We're going to do these for Amiga, as well as, of course, um, the CD32 and CDTV. And I give personal thanks to uh, Sonnenose and RSN 8887 for doing a tremendous job with the Amiga core and such. Uh, now we're going to do the 4000 which is essentially about the same as uh, A1200, but it doesn't hurt to have it in case you want to play around some of your variables. We have a few more to go here. Okay, and then we got the CD32 here, and we're looking for the 310 CD32 ROM, which should be uh, right about here. Then we got a couple more left. And then we have the extension ROM right below it. It's really not that much to work with. I mean, it's so much easier than before. Before, we had to actually repack games, and it became an absolute nightmare. But now you can literally just run ADFs, HDF files uh, that you have laying about and such, and they run fine. Okay, now we have the Kik uh, 34005CD3 uh, TV right here. And we're looking for the 130 CD TV extension ROM, which would be right up about uh, right here. Now we have all the BIOS together here, and we're going to go back and back in so they're all in alphabetical order here. 
And we have all the files that I just renamed right here. I'm going to copy these to my BIOS folder. And all these files right here, I'm going to do one of two things with these. I'm going to just take these and copy and paste them right to my flash drive with the setup. RetroArc. System. And I already did it before, but I'm going to do it again. Copy them over. And the alternate method you can do is if you have Hashi, you can actually go into, uh, you know, if you're on the Mega Drive SNES or NES Classics, you can go to Modules, came up these Mod Hub. And this is the way that you'd install BIOS on that system. So I'm showing you uh, both methods right now. We're going to the BIOS tab. Right here. And you'd have a master BIOS module. You could actually just uh, go to that, uh, navigate right to that, which I'm going to do right now within Hashi. Go to this uh, Hashi folder. We'll go to user mods. And then we'll go to the master BIOS module. Etc. the bedroll system and we just copy the BIOS right here and it's as simple as that That's all you got to do and then you just install it and you can run it But uh, now we have those BIOS copied over we have the game set up and we're gonna test these out real quick on the mini classic So we're gonna do it on a PlayStation classic particularly right now We should be able to run pretty much all the Amiga games And the readme is gonna have a little bit more information as you will see like uh, you can actually force certain system types I'll show you that too so the first thing we're going to do is actually try some legal games like Turrican and such. And I'm going to put some of these on the mod hub for the Mega Drive, SNES, and NES Classics. We're going into RetroArch and I'm uh, basically testing a work in progress core right now, which I will post probably with, within the next week or so. We're going to go to low content, Star Trek 3, Dummy, uh, Mega, And uh, we're going to load up a uh, Turrican demo right now, which I'm going to put on the mod hub. And uh, since we have the bio set up, it should run fine. Uh, so we're going to get that nifty little load thing here. Get a little volume here because this music is absolutely incredible. Love that little floppy loading uh, sound effect. So realistic there. Authentic to the original time. A uh, Turrican demo here. Again, we're keeping everything legal today for this uh, demonstration. And wait to hear some amazing music. And you can push R1 and you can see whether or not you have Mouser uh, the controller. And you can push select to be, uh, switch between them. See, M1, M2, mouse. J1, J2, Joypad. And then of course you can do L1 to see a virtual keyboard. Very, very awesome stuff here. This music is awesome. And you can see everything's running fantastic uh, performance and speed wise and just look how fast I got everything up and running there. And again, before we actually uh, jump the hoops, you basically repack HDF files, which are hard drive images, so they can be utilized. But now you can run about any of them that you find. We'll of course try the uh, demos for uh, Turkin 1 and 2 as well. There's another game I'm going to add to the mod hub as well. A nice homebrew remake, completely redone assets for uh, Rygar, which is a very, very cool game as well. This is run awesome, awesome, awesome stuff here. I'm going to do a bunch more tutorials, try to keep things as simple as possible. Let's say we go into low content Star Trek 3, dummy. Look very, very carefully here. Uh, I have my folder named the CD32 and CDTV. It'll actually do a little bit of a precursor, uh, recursive check, uh, should I say, where it checks for the name of the folder, and anything within this folder will actually automatically load with that specific system. So if I load this Xenon 2 right here, it would immediately load with CDTV, just because I'm in a folder of that name. So I'm loading up real quick right now, and it'll actually go to the CDTV logo. Awesome stuff there. And because this has legal music, I'm not going to demonstrate this uh, right now. I mean, that I can play when it doesn't have the music. But the game loaded fine. And we're going to go back to uh, the Amiga folder. And we're going to try a few more games here. We'll do uh, Turrican 2 real quick. Another uh, great, great game. I mean, Turrican 1, 2, 3 are all fantastic. And the Amiga versions are phenomenal. So this should load just fine. And you can actually, uh, like I said, force uh, whether or not it's the folder name for CDTV or CD32, uh, or you can even have AGA folder, or you can have AGA CDTV or CD32 right in the actual file name, and it'll force it that way too. Again, you can look at the README. But here we go, Turkin 2, and we're going to make sure we're on the controller. Yes, we are. We use R1 to see the status bar here. And it's interesting seeing uh, the way that these games actually evolve over time. This music is awesome. 
And they had an interesting, interesting thing with uh, Turrican 3 that kind of threw me off at first. A little bit of my grappling hook. It was pretty difficult to get used to. And it is a difficult game. I do love the little bit of a Jesse Qual, a little bit of Metroid style gameplay here. Run and gun like Metroid style gameplay. We need some power ups here. I probably should have gotten up and got some power ups. Because you're an absolute beast once you get some power ups. There we go, some power ups there. <laughs> And one of the first things that we ever had on Commodore 64 for the Mini Classics was the fact that you had to actually go to a virtual keyboard to push the space bar to even do this attack right here. And uh, FR500 was a great, great uh, gentleman in helping me get that run on the Mini Classics where we could actually remap the system. I'm feeling so miserable at this right now. I'm doing so awful. There we go, we got a nice little power up there. Let's try to get somewhere without dying. <laughs> Take a minute to learn the life down the master. I'm getting my butt whooped. But we're gonna go to Turrican 3, which is even even harder than that. And I'm not really that bad at the game, I'm just sucking right now. But uh, forgive me. We're gonna do Turrican 3 right now. Okay? And we're gonna just do one or two more games real quick. But yes, Turrican 1, 2, and 3, I'll have on the mod hub. The demos are great. I mean, you get quite a bit of material to play. And some demos are actually, uh, theoretically, the full games, uh, depending on what system you're going for. Okay, Turrican 3. And this one's a little bit trickier because you have a grappling hook to worry about. So if you try jumping to the right right here, you have nowhere to go. You end up dying, but you can actually do a grappling hook. It's a little bit tricky to get used to because you have to actually hold the button and then move your arm and then pinpoint the grappling hook. And then you swing. And then tap off to let go once you're done with the swing. It took me a couple tries to get used to this. Hold the button and push up. There we go, and I died. Let's try this again. I really want to try this again. I shouldn't fail this bad at these games. This music is awesome. There we go, arm. Try to get a better, uh, better grip here. Come on, we got this. I can do this. There we go. Then we got a jump to worry about there. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to the grappling hook. I mean, just like when you first played buying a commander, remember how. Uh, it took you a while to learn it, then you could just navigate the entire game and don't even uh, remember that there ever was never a jump button to begin with. I'm loving it, they added digital speech to this as well. And I love my shmups on this system. There we go, a little bit of uh, electroshock therapy going through there. The game is awesome and <laughs> it's very, very challenging, but again, I'll have all these on there. And we have one more that I'm going to add on there to the mod hub as well, which I'll show you next. Now I'm loving a parallax scroll, and uh, let's go to my little folder here, Amiga, and there's a nice little remake of Rygar, the arcade version, great Tecmo game, which I'm going to have on there too, and we're going to run that real quick, and again, uh, it is awesome that we're able to run uh, Rygar arcade uh, homebrew variant on a mini classics, you'll see for yourself in a moment here, should be loading up right there, look at that nifty little load screen there, Rygar, and we got our load screen here. And big, big fan of Rygar, especially the NES version, which is absolutely completely different than the arcade version. They are completely different games, just like Bionic Commando has absolutely nothing to do with the arcade version. And of course, even Strider has nothing to do with the arcade version. There are like more Metroidvania style games on the home NES ports and such. We're going to try Rygar's our, uh, one of our final games in this tutorial. Again, uh, read the tutorial. If you have any difficulty, let me know. And I have the non-forever bios as well as the forever bios, and you can run them both ways. But let's try Rygar for a moment, and we haven't set the joypad, so we should be fine. And again, most of the Amiga games run at 50 frames per second because they are POW games. Because the system did way, way, uh, uh phenomenally better, and of course, uh, Europe didn't do it over here. Okay, let's try the Rygar uh, homebrew of the arcade here. I mean, they did an incredible job getting the assets up and running here. It's like a whole new game here. And uh, there's supposed to be a few surprises added as well here. Okay, we're gonna try this out for a minute. And this game is uh, is tough. It's probably as hard as Haunted Castle, that Castlevania game. They did such a great job here. And look, you uh, you can take it out one single hit. That's how hard the game is. See if we can make it anywhere. Wow, tough game, without a doubt. But awesome, awesome stuff there. And you thought the fleas in Castlevania were hard? <laughs> you take out one hit. You have no chance here. No! I don't even think I'm gonna make it past the first stage. 
and I'm a big, big fan of the NES version. Oh, <laughs> I did the the space hero thing, and uh, since we have a couple minutes left, I'll do uh, one other game uh, real quick. Uh, we could go to one of the HDF games as a test uh, right here. Uh, what do we have that we can do? We'll do uh, Disposable Hero, fantastic game. This one's uh, not one of the demos, of course, so you're gonna have to worry about this one on your own. But awesome, awesome game. We're testing an HDFI, which is a hard drive image. And with the update, we're not gonna have to repack it. You can literally just play it. And it has a nice little nifty info here. So we're playing this real quick. And the music in it sounds quite a bit like KMFDM style music. You'll hear for yourself in a moment here. Big, big shmup fan. There are so many incredible shmups on the Amiga. Without a doubt. Okay, and we're on the joypad there. And you can see it smart switches to a higher resolution where applicable. We're running the A600 model right now, and we're running a 720 by 200. Awesome. We can even add a shader if we'd like to. To give it a, a niftier appearance here. Let's get the game going. I'll add a shader real quick. Okay, we're going to go into a uh, quick menu, shaders. And we're going to go to a uh, low shader preset. And as soon as you exit the game, unless you override this, it's actually going to revert back to normal. We're going to go to Super Eagle here. And it's going to look absolutely beautiful. And then we're going to go into controls, because sometimes if you go into retro settings, you might have to actually go back into controls and reactivate the controls. We're doing this right now. Okay, we're going to retro pad and going back. And we got the controls, and we can push the start button to zoom in or out. You can actually zoom in, uh, zoom out, should I say, so you can use shaders and such. Or you can zoom out if you don't use shaders. Uh, should we say the borders, the overlay borders, sorry. The shader is what I'm running. Oh, I missed, I flubbed that so bad. Today's not my day for a game on oh, the Amiga. Let's try this again. Let's try to at least get somewhere in this game. It is very, very difficult, though. I'm loving this game after M style music. I need some power ups here. Come on, give me a power up. One nice thing is you actually have turbo fire, which is quite helpful. There's one power up. Come on. There we go, we got this this time. Can we make it anywhere? I'm almost done again. Very, very difficult game. There's another game like this on Amiga that's fun to play as well. Oh, listen to that incredible music there. I'm gonna try to hopefully make it to this part. This is where it gets pretty difficult. I should be nearing a boss very soon here. Oh, great, we're going against that 209 here. Almost there. Let's exit the keep. Oh, I'm on the boss. I don't think I'm going to take the boss out, though. I think I'm going to end up losing on the boss. It's going to be some bullet hell stuff going on here. Ah! Mini boss. Mid boss. I need some energy. Red shit needs help badly. I'm doing better than I did last time when I demonstrated this. Oh, we don't need that. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Oh! Okay, we'll try to see out. Another great game. But yeah, that's an absolutely awesome game there. We'll go to the uh, games here, see what else we have to play. We have this great game called Z Out, which is also awesome. I'm going to do that real quick. Let's see how that plays. And again, I'm going to add some more demos. I'll show you one uh, other demo that I have that I can uh, put on there as well. I'm only going to put legal games on the mod hub. Okay, we're doing Z out. Another great game. Let's see how this one plays. And again, we have the joypad because we can push R1 to see whether or not we're on joypad or mouse. And push select the switch between them. And then we can push start to zoom in or out. So we're on the uh, joypad right now, so we're fine. And I'm going to do some updating, of course, for uh, the Commodore 64 as well. Okay, let's see how this plays. This also has an awesome soundtrack. So we can zoom in or out. Oh wow, one hit. I'm done. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna make it anywhere in this game. At least I have a charge blast like guard type though. Wow. This one has no mercy on you at all. This is a tough game. Great music though, and I mean <laughs> these games are incredible. I'll do the other demo next real quick too. There we go, we got a little bit of uh security here. 
still don't think I'm going to make it very far, though, but love the challenge in these games. Okay, we're going to do the other demo real quick. Uh, see what else we can do. Amiga, test two. And we're going to do this uh, demo called Yojo. I'll add that to the mod hub as well. Now I'll have these available on my Google Drive for, of course, uh, the PlayStation Classic. And I've been catching up on uh, shows like I've been watching Ozark on, uh, of course, uh, Netflix. I passed that show up a while back, just like I did Breaking Bad and, of course, uh, Big Bang Theory. But when I went back to it, I found it to be a really, really cool show. And I finished all of season one of Ozark. I'm going to be doing season two and three. And I kind of hope they have a season four. Jason Bateman's always been fun to watch. Even as far as going back to some of his original shows, like Little House on the Prairie, different strokes where he played Derek. And, of course, he was even in Make Your Move with the guy that was later on in Married with Children. I forgot that actor's name. But this game kind of reminds me of a little bit of a Rick Danger style game. Very, very cool. This is definitely going to be cool to play along with the Turrican 1, 2, 3 demo as well as uh, Rygar. And right here is where the game gets pretty hard. This is Rick Danger style here. You fall down to your, uh, the spice of doom there. Very, very cool. Loving this uh, horror atmosphere style music. But I hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals, and there'll be more to come.